Hey X Traders, and we are going to deviate a little bit from our video series on ThinkScript, where I believe we are up to the part where we're going to look at the S&P 500 sectors and grid scripts, as well as the uh, last dividend script. And uh, in the next video, um, we're actually going to look at the breakout script which is actually not in here. But I wanted to deviate a little bit because we are in the middle of, uh, well, earnings season uh, and uh, a lot of economic data um, at a very uh, interesting junction. And I started thinking that maybe many of you see us chatting in the trade, in the channels on Discord. And we, uh, we mentioned we throw around terms that have to do with economic data um, and it actually affects your trading. It, it is something that, even though it is macro, it can affect you on the you know day to day or even swing trading. Um, so it is very important to keep it in mind. So I put together this slide with uh, three, six, nine of my. I'll actually throw in ten here just because uh, earnings season, and um, actually. You know what? I'm going to throw this up here on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start out with that. So uh, let's see if I can cover at least uh, half of these uh, in this video. So let's go ahead and actually, well, get started with earnings season. So I'm going to switch over here to Chrome and see if I can uh, get a uh, earnings calendar for this week. Right, so I'm just Googling. Uh, and there's a lot of places, and you'll see them that they get thrown up on the Discord as well. Um, Benzinga is one of them, and Earnings Whisper is another one that you very surely uh, have seen. I've never seen investing that. Well, that's a sponsored one, so it's an ad. Um, Market Watch has a calendar. And, of course, you can get these on. There's some scripts that will do this. Uh, on different platforms and they'll have their own lists and whatnot but let me switch over to images and you'll see what I'm talking about I'm sure you've seen this kind of a uh, this is oh this is 2019 this is August 14 I'm trying to find a, a recent one I guess um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna find one quickly enough I don't want to uh, overextend this video so let's just look at uh, this one this is the nearest one I saw, or the earliest one I saw, which was uh, last week, I believe, no, a couple of weeks ago. So four times a year, companies report earnings, and uh, they're reported on a quarterly basis, so four times a year. Uh, and it also, um, it, it makes sense because uh, there's a lot of big econ uh, macroeconomic data points, which are also published four times a year on a quarterly basis, such as GDP and stuff like that. So, uh, well, basically, you know how this affects you. Uh, if a company uh, is doing well and they, they report good earnings, theoretically, it should be a positive tailwind for the company. And uh, inversely, if it's not doing very well, if it reports bad earnings, then it goes in the other direction. Now, that doesn't always happen. Uh, there are other things. Um, the two main numbers you will see uh, for all of these quarterly reports, as you would with uh, earnings report, is what the company reports its uh, top line and bottom line uh, were supposed to be, or what what uh, what analysts report the top and bottom line uh, numbers are supposed to be. So the top line is the revenue, how much money they're making, and the bottom line is, let me see if I can bring up check out Yahoo Finance, see if we can see something for tomorrow. I usually check it on my mobile app and it'll tell you which companies are coming up. So today's Wednesday, August 30. So these are the, all the ones that reported today. And then the ones that are reporting tomorrow, they'll usually, uh, uh, most of them will report either before the bell or after the bell. So uh, either after the market close or before the market closes. Okay, uh, let me see if I'll just move over. Uh, well, this was for today, so I'm guessing I have to pick tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, so, oops. Uh, so, tomorrow, Thursday, August 31st, you can see some of these report before the market open, right? Um, 
and some of them re report after the market open, such as this one. Okay, so tomorrow we have, for example, uh, Lululemon, right? And they are there are two things you want to look at, as I mentioned. There's the which is what this column is, the EPS, the earnings per share, and that's the bottom line. Uh, the top line is is usually um, uh, reported as well is always reported as well, but it is uh, it, like I said, it's revenue. It's how much money they actually made. Well, how much they sold, all right, in products or services. Whereas EPS is the profit. It's how much they made uh, divided by the share, uh, the number of shares outstanding. So we're talking about Lululemon. So they're expecting two dollars fifty four uh, cents per share, uh, and that will be tomorrow after the market close. And after they report, there's another piece of information related to the earnings release, which is the earnings call, which is where you know the CFO or, or some other uh, high executive will come on and say, well, this is you know how much money we made, this is why we made so little or why we made more, uh, this is why we're expecting to make more, and this is where they give their guidance, which is the next important piece of information, which even though you might have a uh, met or even beat expectation for the EPS, uh, stocks can sometimes uh, dump after this, and it's because they might guide lower, which means, okay, uh, this is what happened this quarter, you know, you expected, or analysts ex expected 254 for share per share, and we made it, you know, or we beat, you know, we made 256 per share. But you know what? Next quarter looks really tough. You know, Q3, we're, you know, we're running into some stuff here. It's looking pretty bad, and that is is sometimes... Uh, more than enough to make the stock tank. All right, and there's a lot of stuff that you can uh, you can uh, research in here. You can go into the um, uh, the analysis, and they'll usually have the analysts which are covering them. How many of them are covering, which is obviously important. If it's a big enough company or a company with a lot of hoopla, then they'll have a lot of analysts, uh, as in this case, you know, 22 analysts covering it. Um, and they will also have their targets, right? So they'll say how many of them recommend buy or sell. As you can see, see here, uh, a lot of them, you know, a lot of green here. So there's a lot of buy and a lot of hold as well. There's not that much sell. And uh, they'll give you like, you know, the, the kind of uh, the average rating, uh, which in this case is a buy. And they'll give you targets, which is also important. And these are usually 12 months target. 12 month targets, right? So uh, we're looking at within the next 12 months, the, the current price is 376 and the average analyst price target is 420 and then you can calculate your you know uh, you got you know, basically 20 more bucks here 20 more that's 40 bucks uh, so that's about 12 13 percent something like that upside uh, and a lot of people will use that okay so that is uh, what earnings will get you basically right so you have to keep in mind not just the revenue and the EPS uh, but also the guidance that is important and you will hear us talk a lot about um, you know and that's also as I covered in the investment strategy video which I'm in the middle of doing a remake of it by the way um, what upgrades and downgrades ha have a lot to do with right um, if a, a company is having very good earnings then they're going to be upgraded uh, if they if their guidance call calls uh, enough attention from uh, the analysts and then they go over and they, they work their numbers and they find out that that company indeed will have a very good quarter coming up uh, or a very bad quarter coming up then those analysts will then you know basically go through the numbers and what they think the uh, economy is going to do and their market their industry and then basically say okay yeah no we're going to upgrade this because it looks good or we're going to downgrade it because we think it's not you know not going to do very well so when we talk about earnings season we we talk about revenue Ooh, revenue yep we talk about earnings or EPS and we talk about guidance right because all of those can affect the market and not necessarily in the same way that uh, that you might or, or not necessarily in the uh, logical way that one might expect okay there's a lot of expectation built into what happened with the EPS and the revenue they're reporting and versus the one that's uh, going to be guided towards in the next quarter. Okay, so I'm just going to throw in upgrades and downgrades uh, because that is indeed related. Okay, so let's move on to the next one, CPI and PPI. So CPI um, is basically, right, so inflation. So it's measuring, the consumer price index is measuring what the price is paid by the consumer 
in you know a certain basket of goods and, and then they pick out the goods it's not everything uh, it's the more important ones the ones that represent the broadest uh, part of the economy and uh, basically that tells you what inflation is and that's what CPI refers to it refers to inflation it's a measure of how much prices have uh, inflated over the past uh, quarter or year depending on how you're measuring it now uh, the, this you know graph should make a lot of sense uh, in 2020 uh, prices I guess kind of dropped in the beginning and then they exploded you know because uh, I don't know if you heard but there was a lot of problems with supply chains because everything shut down that included uh, not just factories but it also included transport companies uh, you know, ground transport as well as air and sea transport and so um, prices basically you know started creeping up and, and climbing quite fast uh, after the pandemic because you know it was hard to get goods from one place to the to the other and then around 2021 they basically <clears throat> rocketed as you can see they they doubled uh, pretty much from uh, previous uh, levels and that had to do with the fact that now that a lot of companies had figured out how to ship goods and they had these you know COVID protocols in place they were starting to do so but then everybody had a lot of backlog and that you know, created problems, and not to mention uh, by 2022, there were still uh, a lot of problems with uh, shipping. Uh, everything was still very expensive, and then now in 2023, after you know the pandemic reopening, uh, you know after everybody stopped being in lockdown, well now uh, prices have gone down, and um, th that is the uncertain territory that we are now uh, basically navigating. But this is uh, a very important measure of inflation and it's one of those economic data points that are reported uh, and um, actually you'll see another one which is which is also thrown around which is the PCE and um, you know this is according to them the Fed uh, the Federal Reserve this is their preferred measure of inflation and uh, this is just a graph denoting the difference of how the CPI which is normally measured by the government by the BEA um, is composed by these percentages out of food, housing, transportation, medical care, recreation, and other goods and services, which seems to be uh, a lot more <clears throat> uh, uh, leaning a lot more towards housing, as you can clearly see, 42%. Uh, and the PCE is a little bit uh, more, um, you know, uh, equal in distribution, as you can clearly see from that graph. So CPI obviously is important. There's also the other side, which is PPI, which is the prices paid by the producers. And eventually, if if PPI you know jumps up, then some of those you know price increases or some of that inflation will creep up and eventually make it down towards the CPI. Because obviously, if you know, uh, for example, uh, a lot of transport went up. You know, it exploded. The CPI, the the PPI for transport exploded during the twenties and twenty ones, right? Then obviously that's going to make it down to the consumer, because if you know the producers are having to pay more to transport their goods, then they're going to at some point pass on that increase to the consumer. So all right, that is basically CPI and PPI. So uh, and the thing here is again these are uh, either monthly uh, or yearly reports, right? And you will see uh, things like month over month or year over year. Oops, year over year. Okay. Uh, oh, and of course, quarter over quarter. So you have to uh, keep an eye out for those. Sometimes you'll see, um, you know, things uh, like if you see 0.2, 0.3%, that's more than likely the month over month. Uh, when you see something like 3% or 4%, that's probably the year over year. <clears throat> so just keep that in mind. All right, so let's jump over to retail sales. Um, let me see here. Get this out of the way. Retail sales, obviously, have to do with how much people are shopping. One of, these thing, one of the things that's uh, very important to keep in mind is that the U.S. economy is consumer-driven. Okay, It is based uh, very strongly on spending. And however much the consumer spends um, has a lot, a big effect over the U.S. economy. So, <clears throat> which is different, for example, from the Chinese economy, which is more uh, manufacturer-based. Okay, so uh, again, this chart should make sense. Uh, you know, we had a huge uh, retail sales explosion during the pandemic. 
you know, uh, twenty after 2020 and 2021, um, this had a lot to do with uh, the fact that people were shopping online. You remember, um, everybody started buying like a you know office equipment for their houses, and they started buying uh, or stocking up on food and uh, a lot of other uh, home supplies, and that had uh, a lot to do with the explosion that you can clearly see here from the 20 to the 21. Uh, and then in 22, this unfortunately doesn't have 23, but in the 22, it dropped off because basically we had to come back to normal levels, right? So 2021 was obviously a uh, pandemic effect, okay? You can see it's more than double, uh, but then it came back down to more normal levels. And this is, again, something that is re reported. And if you're trading stocks such as Target or Walmart, right, or, or, or Etsy or Wish, I don't know, all the other... Um, it, Costco, the uh, dollar stores, all those you know companies, Kroger, uh, they, well, uh, sorry, uh, was it not Kroger, um, Kohl's, um, you know, Home Depot, those are all uh, retailers, and they have uh, um, they have their ups and downs for different reasons, right? For example, to give you an example, um, I remember uh, that a lot of people. A lot of people talk about Lowe's and Home Depot whenever hurricane season comes around, right? Because it has a big effect on uh, sales. You know, houses getting destroyed and whatnot. And uh, that has a lot to do with uh, U.S. retail sales. So uh, these are also reported uh, quite often. And uh, they should also be monitored in case you are trading retail stocks, right? So we're going to just leave retail sales there and we're just going to drop some tickers uh, right, which uh, have to do with uh, retail. Okay, um, consumer sentiment. Uh, again, this is related to uh, retail sales. Consumer sentiment or consumer confidence um, is uh, affected by uh, different uh, expectations of what the you know what the economy is like. If you have an economy that's looking kind of sluggish, right, as you as happened in twenty. 2020, um, then the consumer sentiment drops because consumers say, oh, no, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to be spending uh, as much as we usually would. Uh, as you can clearly see, this was on an uptrend. And then in 2020, with the pandemic, it dropped because everybody got scared. They didn't know what was going to happen. So, of course, you stop spending Your uh, is number one. So obviously, retail sales are affected. But you also... Um, there are certain things that are affected by uh, an event such as a pandemic or a, a lockdown because you won't stop buying food and medicines, which is probably more of what the kind of stuff that um, Walmart and Target sell. So you would expect retail sales to go up, but you def definitely don't feel good about the economy and your sentiment as a consumer you know, drops a lot because you don't know what's happening in the economy. You don't know what's going to happen in the future. You're definitely not going to start making purchases like houses and, and, and cars and you know things like that because there are certain things that are considered uh, discretionary goods, right? There's the luxury goods uh, or discretionary goods, and then there's the consumer staples that you always buy, right? So <clears throat> that is uh, another, another um, indicator that gets thrown around, and it's usually reported by uh, Michigan, the, the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Report is called. I'll, uh, I have a list of all of these in a little bit. Okay, and since we do have time for probably one more, one, two, three, four, we've been through four, let's do five, GDP. And this is one of the heavy weight, uh, one of the more important ones. Uh, this is a chart of GDP. This is GDP in actual dollar values, right, in trillions of dollars. And uh, you can clearly see how it drops off in 2020. And then it, uh, it it peaked back up, and now it's just kind of settling back down um, after having recovered. Uh, you'll see it reported uh, in dollar terms, and you will also see it reported in, let me see, this is an incomplete chart. Uh, that, again, is in dollars. Uh, but sometimes you'll see it reported as percentages because they're actually talking about the uh, percentage growth, such as... No, this is income and spending. Here we go. Here's a chart. Uh, so sometimes you'll see it. Okay, so you know, in 2020, in the year 2020, GDP dropped 
you know, it, there was actually a contraction, so it was like negative three or so percent. In 2021, it exploded back up, as we remember, and that it, it crept up to 6%. And this is year over year. So this is how much it grew from 20 to 2021, uh, it grew 6%. And then uh, from 2021 to 2022, it only grew 2% and so on. And this is the kind of data that is, which is also reported on a quarterly basis, okay? And they review it. They also review it. Now, there's something that's really important about this, which I wanted to mention, um, which is there's GDP, right? And that's uh, usually trillions of dollars, right? Or figures such as, you know, I don't know, a, a nominal GDP growth on year over year, is probably like 5%, right? Let's do year over year. Um, or you could do uh, quarter to quarter. It's usually uh, around, let's say, 0.8%. I could do like 2%, 1.5%. I believe that's what it is around uh, right now. And uh, But then there's also uh, a GDP... Uh, now, okay, which is a data point which is not always reported, but if you do run into it, it's important to know. And GDP now is actually, it's not called a forecast, it's called a nowcast. Uh, and, and what it is, it's basically a GDP value that they calculate, I believe, uh, is on a daily basis. Uh, and, and it is available, but it is not complete. It hasn't, it doesn't factor in certain things such as, um, you know, big events, big macroeconomic events like geopolitical situations or pandemics or strikes or things like that. Uh, it's basically a up-to-date uh, production data uh, of a certain uh, group of companies that are included in this, um, uh, in this calculation or model. It is a forecast model. Uh, and um, we, you could Google it or, or find it on Wikipedia and see what it is. Uh, but uh, it is sometimes used to forecast GDP ahead of time. Okay, so those are all, that's like the top five. No, it's not the top five. It's five of the ten. Okay, because we'll definitely cover these other ones. Uh, I'll split it up into another video so it's not so long. But these are some of the more important economic indicators that you will find um, that are important. To keep an eye on, and this is a tradingeconomics.com calendar, uh, which is uh, we used it to actually come in here. There's a lot of things that you can find in here uh, that are reported, and as you can see, you can pick your dates, right? And you can filter by countries as well. If we just do U.S., for example, that's too many. You know what? I'm just because I do keep an eye on a lot of these other ones, but if you're only you know trading in the U.S., although you know. With the global economy the way it is, the global economy is so interconnected that you can't just really keep track of one, at least the most important partners, so U.S., Mexico, Canada, but, well, China. But, for example, this is telling us that for Wednesday, August 30th, and you can see the little U.S. flag here, starting at 5 a.m., you get the mortgage rate and mortgage applications, which are very important. Okay, and then you get, later on at 6.30 a.m., you get GDP growth rate. So this is quarter on quarter for the second, this is the second estimate uh, which I believe is for the previous quarter, which was Q2. So the, they revise it. They they put out the GDP, obviously, after the quarter closes, and then they make a revision. And I believe they even make up to a third revision, if I'm not mistaken. So this is going to be the second revision for Q2. Uh, as you can see here, again, you know, this actual was 2.1, and the previous, uh, that was a previous, but the consensus was 2.4, and it came in at 2.1, right? Um, I do believe this has been revised down. So um, this was, oh yeah, this was revised down. This was actually today. Uh, this was actually today. <clears throat> okay, um, you get uh, retail inventories without autos. Um, you get, you know, a lot of stuff here. The I believe the PCE is here as well. PCE prices, that's going to be, re that was uh, reported. Let me see here. That make sure this is Wednesday. Yep, Wednesday. Okay. Uh, the core PCE, the real consumer spending, GDP sales, you get uh, oil uh, stocks, uh, inventories as well. Uh, and then you can just go through the list and go through the day. So here's Thursday, here's tomorrow. So tomorrow we get 
let's see here tomorrow we get uh, personal income and spending you get the core PCE uh, you get jobless claims which is one of the ones that we'll look at in the next video um, and then you keep going down the list right and then Friday so I'm not gonna go through all of these but basically if you are trading a stock during a particular week and you see one of these uh, you know economic data points uh, being uh, that it's calendarized and it's, it's it's set to be reported during this week, then you better be careful what it is you're trading because, you know, you could run into a nasty, unexpected surprise. Uh, and that's something that you want to stay clear depending on um, what you, uh, what you're trading because, uh, you know, basically, or because face it, no, nobody knows what's really going to ha happen. So uh, if you're trading with these kinds of events, which have a lot to do with volatility, by the way, especially if you're trading options, then you want to be careful because the increase in volatility, uh, you know, if you didn't plan for it, then it's definitely going to go against you. <clears throat> uh, and the drop in volatility after the report as well. So I just wanted to cover some of those basic terms, and I will continue with these in the next video. We'll look at jobless claims, or basically the labor market. We'll look at the dollar and the yields and oil, as well as, as, well as mortgage apps. So I hope you found this interesting, and if you have anything that you would want me to cover specifically, uh, you know, how different uh, economic data points affect the, uh, the, the markets, uh, then go ahead and drop comments in the comment section. And remember to subscribe to our channel and uh, click on the bell to stay notified of new videos. They're posted on a weekly basis. And don't forget to use my invite link to sign up for an X-Trades uh, membership plan. You know, uh, And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great one.